And so the first thing it talks about is just getting you used to what the term roots. Um, we've dealt a ton with square roots. We're going to throw in other roots, so higher roots. Um, since 5 squared equals 25, then 5 is the square root of 25. Since 5 cubed equals 125, then 5 is the cube root of 125. Since 5 to the 4th is 625, you should see a pattern here. 5 is the 4th root of 625. What they're trying to say is you can have any number root, just like you can have anything to a number of power. All right? I could keep going. Um, so this is the definition of the nth root. For any real number a and b and any positive integer n, if a to the n equals b, then a is the nth root of b. Nth root of b, all right? Meaning, 5 is the fifth root of 3,125, all right? That's what that means. So if you can take a number to a power, it is that power's root of that number. So looking at just finding the roots, page 364, the first example here. The cubed roots, they want us to find the cubed roots of 0 0.008, negative 1,000, and 1 over 27. So they want us to find the numbers that multiply by itself three times, raise it to the third power to get those numbers. When you have a decimal, look at just the number itself, 8. What is the cubed root of 8? 2. two. So I have 1, 2, 3 decimals. So the cubed root of 0 0.008 then is going to be point two, one decimal. If I have three decimals, my cubed root will have one. If I had six decimals, my cubed root would have two decimals. Wait, Just divide your decimals in half. So this has three decimals, one, two, three. My cubed root, divide three by the cube, the three, should have one decimal. So, so if this has three decimals, this should have one decimal. Look at the next one, negative 1,000. So what do I multiply itself to the third power to get 1,000? Yeah. 10, I want negative 1,000. Negative 10, all right? By the way, that's only going to work if you have an odd so, number. So you, you have... All right, let's look at fractions. When I do a fraction, I just do them individually. The cubed root of 1. By the way, any root of 1 is just 1. And then the cubed root of 27. Three. Yeah, 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. So my cubed root of 1 over 27 would be 1 third. All right, so try those fourth roots there. All right, fourth root of one. By the way, any root of one is just one. So the fourth root of one is just one. All right, any root of one is just one. So I know I'm going to use a one. Right? What's the problem here? Can I multiply anything by itself four times and get a negative? Does not, and we are looking for real numbers here only. If they had allowed us to do imaginary, we would have had an I in our answer. It said real. We're looking for real roots, so it does not exist. Real in the real number world. If they had let me do imaginary, I could have done an I here, but they didn't. We're not. All right, what about this one? Fourth root. So I'm going to take. And by the way, if you don't know this, again, you can use your factor tree. You're looking for what does four times. One, two, three, four. The fourth root of 16 is two. If I don't know the 81, you can do it like this. Nine and nine, three, three, three and three. One, two, three, four. The fourth root of 81 is three. All right? So when you're looking for a root, whatever one you look for. And when you have a, when you have a fraction, do the top one, the numerator, that root over the denominator's root. So let's look at some terminology here first. Terminology here. A radical sign is used to indicate a root. So the radical sign is that notation that you're so familiar with here. Radical sign, all right? Um, the number that is inside the radical sign is the radicand. Radicand. And the number root you're looking for is the index. So just like an exponent tells you how many times you take it to the power, an index tells you what root you're looking for. Principal root. When a number has two real roots, the positive root is called the principal root. So if you were to able to have um, two roots, like if you have a, so remember when you take a square root, you have to consider the positive and negative root. Most of the time when they give you a real number and there's no variable involved, they are talking about the positive root, the positive root, not the negative root. The only time you would consider a negative root is if you had x equals the square root of something, and then you would say, potentially, I'm looking for a positive or negative, all right? 
But principal root here is talking about the positive root. The other thing I want to point out, and we're going to do examples for each of these. For any negative real number A, and they give us this, absolute value is used. So what they're saying here is if you have um, an even root, so let's say my N here is even, 2, 4, 6, 8, my index is even. And when I finally simplify it, what I take out is to the odd power, and it is a variable. Because it's a variable, it could be a positive or negative number. But if I'm talking about an even root and I need the principal root, I put absolute value around it to indicate that it is the principal root. Now, if they, don't, if they tell you assume it's all positive or whatever, you don't have to worry about the absolute value. But when you have an even index and an odd exponent, once you simplify it, you need your absolute value there to indicate you have found the, um, that the value there is positive because had it been negative in here, we'd have had a problem. So let's look at these examples that follow those. The first one is finding the real number root. Real number is very important here. They are not including imaginary co or complex. They're talking about real only. So for an eight, we look at just the eight. What multiplied by itself three times gives us eight? And then does the negative work with an odd index? Yes. yes, as long as your index is odd, you can have a negative, it would be negative two. And we are good. 100, 100 actually has a root. It is square root 10, however, this is negative. My index is what? What is the indicated one when you don't see one? Uh, one. Yeah, so it's it's going to be not one. It's going to be two, square root. So when you do not see an index, it's going to be two. They are talking about real numbers. If it was imaginary, yes, you would put an I in it. But because they said real number, that excludes your imaginary. And so you have to say, nope, does not exist. Or it's not Wait, possible. What? Cubed root of negative 27. Cubed root of negative 27. You should have gotten negative 3. Yeah. Fourth root of positive 81. Mm. Fourth root of positive 81 is positive 3. And square root of 49 is 7. 65. Simplify it. Now we have thrown variables in the mix. Variables yes. in the mix. So I will show you the easiest way to do this with variables. And here, um, you're going to take your number first. So we are going to look at just the four here, and we want the square root because there's not an index shown. So the square root of four is just two, right? For my variable, I can take my exponent that's right here and divide it by my index. So I can take that exponent, six divided by two, that will give me three with a remainder of zero, okay? So my six, my exponent right here, divided by my index, three remainder of two. That means three x's will come out and none of your x's will stay in your radical. So that means my answer here is gonna be two x cubed. So Look at the next one. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. This is all variables. So I have three divided by three, that means a to the first power. Six divided by three, that's b to the second power. You don't need to write that one, so a, b squared would be my answer here. Let's go. Three. Oh, so you just yep, so, it's just gonna tell you what it is there. All right, last one, x is, you're gonna have four divided by four, so you'll have x to the first power. Eight divided by four, y to the second power. Now, here's what I wanna point out before we finish this particular example. This was an even exponent, right? Um, I mean, an even index, and I had an odd exponent on the outside. This is where I would need to indicate absolute value. Even index, odd, when it came out, I need to do absolute value because x cubed could have been negative, all right? It could have been negative, but I have an even index, so I can't take the square root of a negative number, all right? The a and the x on the next one? Right, so just the a on this one, just the a on this one um, 
if this had been even, but this is an odd one, so I could have a negative in that guy. What are we talking about? So for this first one, I had even. I can't have a negative in an even root, yeah. right? So when I pull this out, I'm gonna indicate that this guy would be positive because I'm talking about the principal root. Principal root is your positive root. We're looking for principal roots. This is um, a cubed. I don't need an absolute value here because you can have a negative cubed root, no problem, all right? For this one, one of these is going to need an absolute value because I have an even, this is odd, that's even. So for this one, I only have to worry about the x having an absolute value there. X is my odd, right? Y is already squared. Y is going to be positive no matter what because it's squared. So I don't have to worry about that one. I only have to worry about the odd one, all right? So if it is an even index and when you pull it out, your exponent is odd, that is when you need your absolute values. If it is an odd index, you don't have to worry about absolute values at all. And if it's a negative, all right, for the first one, when you simplify the square root of 4 is 2, and you should have gotten x to the first power, and then y to the second power, if it'll let me just delete it. All right, x to the first power, y to the second power. Do you need uh, x there, uh, absolute value? You do need an absolute value for that one. You do need an absolute value for that one. Let's look at the next one. Cubed root of 27 is going to be 3. Since it's negative 27, that's negative 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Negative 3c squared. Negative 3c squared. For that one, no absolute value because your index was odd. All right, for this one, x to the 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. y divided by 4 is 3. That is odd. I had an even index with an odd exponent. I need an absolute value there.